Welcome to the Team SNG Deck Profile. So today we are going to be talking about Katakata Curry Curry. We're going to be talking about the Kara Curries. They're a lot of fun. They do a lot of weird stuff. They got their own nice, their own cute little gimmick. So, while I've got your attention though, I'd like to ask you, do leave us a like, leave us a comment, leave us a subscribe. And to all of you that have got us to 100 subscribers, I would like to thank each and every one of you. Also, there's a big announcement which has come out today. If you haven't seen it, link to the announcement video is in the description down below. And that announcement is, we've started a Patreon. And the Patreon's goal will be to get you involved. So if you're interested in that, link to the Patreon's also in the description below. Finally, check out Team's Facebook page. That's down below too. Alright, so what we're going to talk about today is the Kara Curries. Kara Curries are an interesting deck. All their main deck monsters have this gimmick of when they are attacked, they change their battle position. And the boss monsters, well, the bigger ones anyway, they've got the effect that if a battle position of a Karakuri monster changes, they do something. So we'll talk about all of them when we get to them. That's really all I can say about it, so let's just get into it. As always, we're going to start off with the monster. The first monster we run is Karakuri Gamma. Model 4624 Shirokunishi. Basically, it's Karakuri Frog. What he does is he can be used in the graveyard, and as a quick effect, you can banish him to target a Karakuri monster on your side of the field and change its battle position, allowing you to trigger the boss monsters at will. He's a level 1 tuner, which is really useful because we run a variety of different tuners and a variety of different non-tuners so that we can manipulate levels on field at will. Next is our level 2 tuner. We only run two copies of him, and that is Karakuri Barrel Model 96 Shinkuri. We're, we're going with Barrel. What Karakuri Barrel does is, once per turn, he can't be destroyed by battle. And he has the same effect as all the main decks, where he changes his battle position when he's attacked. Next, our level 3 tuner, who's probably one of our more useful tuners. Karakuri Komachi, model 224, Ninishi. I just call this Karakuri Ninishi. What she does is that she allows you an additional normal summon of a Karakuri monster. And the final Karakuri tuner that we run is... Karakuri Watchdog, model 313, Sizen. What Karakuri Watchdog does is, while on the field, if you take battle damage from battle involving him, all other Karakuri monsters on your side of the field gain 800 attack and defense. This doesn't really come up as we're quite often just sinking him off really quickly. On to the non-tuner Karakuris we run. The first is the Rota of the deck. Karakuri Merchant, model 177. Inashichi. I've probably butchered that name, but what he does is when he's normal summoned, you get to search a Karakuri card directly from the deck to your hand. So he acts as your Rota, and with Ninishi allowing you an additional normal summon, you could summon Ninishi, then summon him, and still get his search off. He doesn't get his search off of special summoning though, so you do need to be wary of that, as the deck does do a lot of special summoning. Next we run... A couple level 4s. The first is Karakuri Soldier Model 236 Nisamu. Uh, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special a special summon a level 4 or lower Karakuri monster directly from your deck. So this is basically he floats, he recurs himself, which is the reason we run him. The next level 4 that we run is Karakuri Muso. Model 818, Hypa. What he does is, at the end of the battle phase, if he battled, you get to change his battle position, meaning that you can trigger your boss monsters more effectively on your turn by attacking with him, and then at the end of the battle phase, he'll change his battle position, and your boss monsters' effects will all trigger. And the final main deck Karakuri monster that we run is Karakuri Bones. Model 9763, Kunazaman. His effect is that you can special summon him from the hand by changing the battle position of a Karakuri monster. The reason this is really useful to us is if you have Karakuri Merchant, you can normal summon your merchant, 
search out your bones, change your merchant's battle position, special summon your bones, and that will then let you get into your boss monster at level 7, because he becomes a tuner when he is special summoned by his own effect. He also will lock you into Earth Machines, so you do need to be a bit wary of that, because you can no longer special summon anything but an Earth Machine monster. This isn't really a concern though, as all of our boss monsters are Earth Machines. Now on to some of the other main deck cards, monsters we run that aren't Karakuri. The first is two copies of Despot 001, and the second is one of the best normal summons for the deck in Despot 003. The, way that, the reason we run this is we do run Halka Fibrax because Halka Fibrax shenanigans can be really good for the deck. And Despot 003 is a one card Halka Fibrax that nets us a second 001 and a bunch of bodies on board. Finally, because every monster we run in the main deck is a Earth type, we run one copy of Lithosagium, the true king of disaster. Basically, destroy two Earths in your hand, special summon this, then you take three cards out of your opponent's extra deck, which this day and age, seeing as the extra deck is so important, can definitely cripple any opponent's strategy. And it does it for our monsters. On to our spells. The only spells that we currently are running are Karakuri spells. The first is to give us some draw power. Karakuri Anatomy will gain an encounter every time a Karakuri monster changes its battle position. You can remove this card from the field with two counters to draw two cards. Or you can remove it with one to draw one card. But there's enough ways to change battle positions using a monster in our extra deck and using Karakuri Frog that we should be able to quite consistently get two counters on this on our turn. Next, to help with this, we have Karakuri Cash Cash. What this card lets us do is change the battle position of a face-up Karakuri monster and add a level 4 or lower Karakuri monster directly from the deck to our hand. So that nets us a search and it can trigger our boss monsters or Karakuri Anatomy by changing the battle position of one of our Karakuri monsters. Next, we run two copies of Karakuri Gamma Oil. Gamma Oil is so good. It is a recursion card for later in the duel, really. We don't need it early on. But what it does is it lets us special summon a Karakuri monster from our graveyard, and that can be any Karakuri monster. Also, if the battle position of a face-up Karakuri monster changes, the monster this card is equipped to gains 500 attack and defense. But that doesn't actually need this card to continue to be equipped to him. So if you summon back one of your boss monsters and this card gets destroyed, your boss monster doesn't get destroyed. And he continues to gain the 500 attack and defense bonus every time a Karakuri monster changes its battle position. But it only gains that bonus once per turn. The bonus sticks around though. So, over, many, over a long grindy game, that monster will get pretty big. Finally, we run two copies of Karakuri Gold Dust. Karakuri Gold Dust lets us target two of our face-up Karakuri monsters that are in attack position. You change one to defense, and the other one gains the now defense position Karakuri attack points. So, the other thing is, this being in a quick effect, if you've got two face-up attack position Karakuri monsters and your opponent goes to attack one of them, you change the battle position of one, the other one gains the power boost. And that does it for our spells. On to our traps. Again, much like our spells, we are only running Karakuri traps. The first Karakuri trap that we are running is Karakuri Clock. We only run two copies of this. It can act a bit like a mirror force for us, in that if our opponent attacks a face-up defense position monster, Karakuri monster, we get to blow up all monsters on their side of the field that are face-up. So that's really good for us. Uh, the only problem is that if you have an attack position monster that gets changed to defense position, the timing doesn't quite work that you can activate this because it's upon declaration. And your monster will change battle position after declaration. So you just need to be wary of that when you activate, use this card. 
The next Karakuri trap that we run is Karakuri Cash In. Karakuri Cash In lets us change the battle position of a face-up Karakuri monster and negate an effect of a face-up monster on our opponent's side of the field. So this is basically a negation that will trigger off our boss monsters, which is really, really good. The next Karakuri trap that we run is Karakuri Trick House. If the battle position of a Karakuri monster is changed, you can activate this, target a, car a card on your opponent's side of the field, and destroy it. So this partners up with a lot of the boss monsters to allow us to get lots of effects off and lots of removal when our opponent attacks us or, or when we change the battle position of our Karakuris using one of our spells, our traps, or our Karakuri frog in the grave. And the final trap that we run is two copies of... Ooh. That's a mistake. Let's fix that real quick. Karakuri Cash Shed. There we go. So, two copies of Karakuri Cash Shed are the last two traps that we run. We currently don't have them in-house. They're on their way in the mail. But we're using Mistake as a proxy. Karakuri Cash Shed allows us to, if we have a face-up defense position Karakuri monster, we get to activate this to negate the activation of a spell trap on our opponent's side of the field. It's a really good card for us because of the very simple fact it just gives us some more negation and the ability to control our opponent's board state while also benefiting from our monsters being in defense, which our deck likes to do quite consistently. That does it for the main deck. On to the extra deck. First, we're going to talk about the Karakuri monsters we run. Every single Karakuri extra deck monster has the effect that it can, upon being synchro summoned, can special summon from the deck a Karakuri monster. This allows the deck to really take off once you've got two of your boss monsters on the field. So, the first card that we run is three copies of Karakuri Shogun Model 00 Beret. This is our level 7. This is the typically your play starter that you're going to try and get into. He special summons from the deck, but he also, once per turn, lets you target a face-up Karakuri monster and change its battle position. This isn't a quick effect, so you can only use it on your turn, which is a bit of a shame, but this will let you trigger off anything, and it is a soft once per turn, as is all the Karakuri extra deck monsters effects. Meaning that you can summon this three times, you get three summons straight from the deck, and you could theoretically change the battle position of cards on your side of the field three times. Which is really good when you consider that you could partner that up with something like your Karakuri Anatomy to draw three cards. That's really, really useful. And that's why how this deck continues to generate its hand advantage. The next Karakuri monster that we run in the extra deck is two copies of Karakuri Beredu. This is the Steel Shogun, model 00x. What he does is when the battle position of a face-up Karakuri monster is changed, you get to draw a card. So this combined with Karakuri Anatomy and Karakuri Bure lets us draw potentially two cards per turn. This helps the deck gain so much hand advantage that typically you're going to end with five cards in your hand even if you've managed to go into three or four boss monsters in a turn. Finally, the level nine Karakuri boss monster we like to run. Karakuri Super Shogun model 00N. This is the biggest boss monster that the deck runs. And what it does is if a Karakuri monster changes battle position while this card's face up on the field, Target and banish a card on your opponent's side of the field. If you've got three copies of this on the board at once, you're banishing three cards. This removal, when partnered up with other cards in the deck, allow us to really control our opponent's board state and stop them from being able to build a board as they're going. That does it for our Karakuri extra deck monsters. Now, because we run all Earth monsters, we can use... Nichuria Beast, 
and Nature Barkion. And because we get to manipulate the levels on the field, getting into these is really not that difficult for us. So we can easily end on a board which has maybe two Bereboos and a Beredu and a Nature Beast or a Nature Barkion, depending on whatever matchup we're in. And that can be really useful. Another monster we run that requires an Earth Tuner, Goyo Guardian. Taking stuff away from our opponent is always, always fun. However, if we're not looking to necessarily negate a spell or a trap with Nature Based or Nature Barkion, we can just have our negate through Borlode's Savage Dragon. Again, because we get to manipulate the levels on the field so well, Borlode's Savage Dragon tacking him onto the end of a play is not that difficult. That does it for our Synchro Monsters. We run two. Link monsters, the first of which is Christron Halka Fibrax. Synchro plays, guys. Halka Fibrax has got to be here. He's basically a big combo starter. He lets the deck really take off. You can definitely do a lot with the deck without Halka Fibrax, but you are somewhat limited and your end board is somewhat smaller. Next is Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. Being able to go Halka Fibrax into any of our Karakuri Tuners or our Deathbot 001 up to our Aurorodon is really, really useful. Now, obviously, this benefits with our 001 play because 001 will return himself to the board, which then gives us the tuner we need to tune off, to sync off the tokens produced by Meta Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. Finally, because one of the best end boards we can end on is three Karakuri Barebus, which are all level 9, we can overlay two of them to really stall our opponent with True King of All Calamities. This plays definitely not my favorite because I'm not a fan of turning off all the interactivity, but I do like the fact that this play does give us the ability to truly control the board state. That does it for the extra deck, guys. So, my final thoughts on the deck. The deck's quite fun. It's very consistent because of the fact that it can do a lot with very little. However, it does run into problems if you are hand-trapped. An Effect Veiler, uh, an Impermanence, an Ash Blossom, any of those cards can really, really hinder the deck's ability to play because of the very simple fact that it's so reliant on being able to search out stuff and being able to go into its big combo that you're in trouble if you get hand trapped. Using Despot 003, this deck can do a whole lot. A single Despot 003 can potentially end you on a board with three Bereboos, a Hypa, and an Auroradon, and that's just a single card. You're likely to have a couple other cards in hand that you can utilize, and that can get you an even more significant board, which is really cool. On top of that, you know, the ability to gain hand advantage with Karakuri Anatomy and your boss monster Karakuri Beredu is really nice. So you can do a whole lot with very little, but you can also gain back a whole lot. Also, your ability to control the board state with cards like Karakuri Trick House, Karakuri Beredu, and Karakuri Cash In is really, really nice. The negation you get from Karakuri Cash In is really useful because it does help trigger your boss monsters, as well as giving you the ability to negate stuff on your opponent's side of the field, and being able to go into its big con- The extra deck is vital to this deck's functionality. The ability to go Halka Fibrax into Aurorodon gives you the ability to go Beray, Beraydu, on top of that, and Beraybu. You know, the all of which act as extenders. If you want to see how this deck does it, check out the Test Hands video, which will be coming out later this week. And that all being said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Leave us a like, leave us a comment, leave us a subscribe. Check out the Patreon, links in the description down below. Join us next time to see the Test Hands for this, and I'll catch you at the next video.